also vote on other people's questions as they go, which is, I think, so fun because it's kind of like Reddit where you can vote up and down on question types. We are happy to answer or even like Q&A in live time. Seattle, Washington, Houston, Texas, uh, San Diego. Oh, San Diego is one of my favorite cities. I'm not going to lie. If it wasn't so expensive, I'd move there. Um, but once you get to Austin and don't have income tax, you get real comfortable. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Seattle, Washington also doesn't have income tax, but it's too cloudy up there. Ottawa, Canada. Oh, Canadians are so fun. We have like four Canadians on our team. Dan Jackson, he is um, part of our research team. He is up in Canada. Um, if you didn't know, we have many platforms um, at Question Pro. We have surveys, communities, workforce. We do, um, we do uh, even like Question Pro or survey programming. Um, so, you know, if you're, depending on what license you're on, there are always other options. And we want to, uh, to let you guys know that. Uh, Kartik and I will be presenting today and they call Kartik kind of the, not the survey guru, that's not probably the right term, but the survey master, the <laughs> survey wizard. Uh, now I'm just like picking like different mythical creatures. Um, <laughs> What would you call yourself, Kartik, if you were to give yourself a uh, a survey title to be knighted? Survey. It's a good. It's a good thing you mentioned survey title. I was like, any of the titles I can think of don't have surveys in them. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, and I'm. If you didn't know, I'm the director of marketing here at Question Pro. You probably see me on a lot of these things, like live with Dan which is on Fridays. We also have a CX, I'm not on this one. On Wednesdays, we have a CX um, live stream that you can join. And we have a Tuesday live stream all about work at life with our president of workforce, Sonia Lucina. Okay, well, I, you know, we've seen some people jumping in. So let's try and just like jump into the questions. Uh, Kartik, let me find the list. Are you ready? I know you were looking at some of them ahead of time. Yep, I'm ready. And I think the way we could do it is like uh, the attendees we have so far, we'll go through like their questions first. Mm -hmm. uh, and then once we're done with that, then we can go through the other questions that are submitted as well. Let's do it. Awesome. So oh. you'll need to stop sharing. Uh, yeah, I'll stop sharing and you can, because I know last time you got in here and really demoed for us. Even I learned a bunch of stuff. Yep. <laughs> uh, okay, so first question. Um, okay, Kartik. So uh, the first question, oh. yeah, you want to just read it out? Yeah, I've actually what I was just, I've do. just bolded the ones that I could find from the attendees here. So we could potentially okay. go through that first and then uh, do the rest. Oh, yeah, let's do that. Look at you. You're so on top of this. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, where were you starting? Perfect. I think we can start with uh, Todd's question, the 12th one. Perfect. Todd, we're so excited you're here and you get your question answered. <laughs> I was just going to go from the top, but this is <laughs> probably better. Uh, Todd, oh, such a long question. How can I create a survey that provides us the following two outputs for each respondent? Uh, this is a lot of examples, Todd. No, I, I think <laughs> I, I got that. I, I can just explain. So basically, it's it's almost like, you know, once you're done with the survey, uh, potentially what should happen is based on the way that you answered the survey, you need to get kind of a custom, you could say like a, message you know uh, as an example like if it's if it's like a help like a covid evaluation as an example right based mm -hmm. on the number of symptoms you you've selected you might either be just told to then take rest at home or immediately contact you know a practitioner or something like that uh, so this is a similar use case where you know based on how someone answers the survey you need to really show uh, show a custom message uh, and uh, the easiest way to do this really is, you know, based on the permutation and combination. So let's say there are five, six, seven potential messages that someone is going to see. So you just add each of the message as a presentation text question. So if I were to like, I'll just go to any of the survey that I have. Let's see. Da, 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 da. 
Okay, so let's say you go to the event satisfaction survey. Okay. And towards the end, all you really do is just add what we call a presentation text question. So it's not really a question, just some static content you can put in here. And you could put whatever message you want, right? So I can just call this, let's say custom message one. And when do I display this message? So I'll just go into logic and I'm going to set up that condition. When would I see this message? Right? So I go into show at question. I give it a name. So let's say I call this condition one and whatever your permutation combination is, right? So if you know Q1 was one of these and Q2 or something or Q3 or something. So you can put in your condition here, save this and similarly keep doing it for the number of messages you have. So you kind of pretty much ensure that, you know, based on how they've answered it, they see the right message before completing the survey. That's awesome. Could you also use that logic if you had to stick in um, not uh, like disclaimers, like, hey, by submitting this, you also agree to da 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 da? Like, yeah, 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 that? absolutely. So the same thing you that. can kind of just go into settings and just enable the disclaimer and then just say, like, what do I need to say, right? Uh, by submitting. you accept and then you put in whatever terms as a kind of a hyperlink and that's about it mm -hmm. i love that that's great it seems very useful almost um like coding you know where when you're like developing a website or something you have like if this happens then do this <laughs> <laughs> uh that's awesome thanks so much todd does that an i hope that answers your question you can let us know in the chat window <laughs> uh I'm very committed to interaction here guys <laughs> Um, that's awesome. Okay, on to the next. What do we got? Do, do, do. Um, okay, um, here we go. Ready? Is there a way to auto populate a response based on an answer to a previous question? Uh, so it really depends like what type of question you want to pull it into, right? Uh, so if it's like an open-ended question, I could potentially use a custom variable. If it's a single select, I could do it through some logic. Uh, so let's take an oh. example of maybe yeah. an open-ended, right? So so you were say, saying if it depends on the question. So there's exactly. an open-ended option There are multiple for this. ways to do it, but mm -hmm. I'm going to take the most common scenario where you know, based on what you whatever you select, you want particular text to be pre-filled in a text box, right? Let's take this example. Uh, so let's say, why did you attend our event? Select all that apply. Uh, or we could say, okay, what is the level of satisfaction with the event? Uh, and whatever selected here, you want this to come up maybe in a text box. So let's say I put in a comment box. And here you could say, you know, please elaborate. But you want this kind of whatever satisfaction they were to just be piped in here uh, so that they know exactly what uh, they want to elaborate on. So all you really do firstly is go into logic on this question, mm -hmm. which is the source question, right? And just okay. apply the branching to the next question and assign a variable. So I could okay. potentially assign, let's say custom one and just apply custom one. So whatever I answer, is going to be updated as custom one. Now, if I don't do anything, if I just save it here, then whatever the question text or the option text is, will get piped in. But if I want to pipe in my own values, I just enter them here. In that case, that particular value would get updated as the variable, right? So oh. now I leave it. I leave it this way and just simply save this. Step two is just go into the open-ended question and just go into validation. Oh, no, sorry, just go into settings. And all you do here is data pre population. You got this option here. And you just stay custom one. And that's about it. So now, whatever I select in this of question is going to be piped in to that question as an option. So let's quickly. Preview this.
and that's it so you know we'll see very satisfied has now come into the answer text similarly like if you you can use this custom tag as a question text or in any other question as well that's great and then that's for the open ended types that you wanted to Correct. auto populate Correct. okay and then what would you do if it was like a multi choice question so for a multi choice question uh, you we can only do it as kind of a hidden question so what would happen is uh, based on how you select maybe you want a particular variable to be updated right that okay. you want to use in your reporting right so for example right. if i'm if i'm 25 to 35 and male and live in uh, california i'm ms1 or market segment 1 or something like that so i want these values to be appended so i can then run maybe some correlation analysis or you know uh maybe cross tabulation or stuff like that on it so the way we essentially do that is you can just type uh, put in a question this is going to be a hidden question so i'm going to call this hidden right and right. to actually hide this so you just want this as a data question it's not really going to be displayed it's only for data collection purposes so all you do is in the question code you will type in space and hidden so this basically mm -hmm. the question is still there but it's not asked to the respondents per se Uh, and then i put in all the possible options right so i could call it let's say segment 1 s2 s3 s4 and so on and save this and finally uh, what i do is just make all of these default selected so what this means is like as soon as they come to this page like this question will uh, all these options are going to be selected but obviously we want any one or two of these right so all you do is now go into logic and just go into show hide options right. and then you define the condition in which each of these should be displayed to begin with right so let's say segment 1 uh option uh -huh. hide option by default show only if and now let's say you know uh this is this particular option and you know this is This so then you say right to me, and I don't know what you're. I was just like, oh man, I got lost halfway in between this question. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, so if right, the condition like, is met, we just want to show <laughs> this option, and that's right. it, right? So now what will happen is like only when this condition is met would this option be shown, and if it's okay. shown, obviously it's default selected, right? So that's how in the background it becomes like a data collection question, and uh, then you can use this okay. data for all your analysis. Right, so if it it's almost like hidden questions are almost like background data that you Perfect. can absolutely okay. Whew. <laughs> I think I got it. <laughs> I'm sure everyone watching has a better since you use surveys daily, probably have a better understanding of what Kartik's uh, doing, <laughs> which is great. I'm just here to add commentary and support Kartik. He's the rock. He's the survey rock star. Oh, look how many nicknames I'm coming up with for you. So good. Uh awesome. Well, I hope that Oh, and we're getting more you're even and you're causing more questions coming in as you're doing more. This is great. Uh Todd, we're so glad that app that helped you. Um and uh you got started. Oh, I'm at least it's sunny in Seattle today. <laughs> That's a <laughs> uh okay. Um who else? Let's see here. Okay, Mary. Who? Ready? How many questions are a maximum for a nonprofit survey to about a hundred stakeholders about short-term vision? So this is kind uh, of best okay. practices. Um, mm -hmm. How many questions do you think they should send? I mean, this about is uh, I, this is very abstract. Obviously, it really depends on <laughs> you know, what it, what is the purpose of the survey. If it's like transactional you know if it's just like you know there's been a meeting and you just want to get feedback on the meeting then it should be nothing more than 2 minutes or you know five okay. or six questions uh but if it's a particular uh, you know study and you know they've kind of accepted to enter the study it could be any as much as 20 minutes so you know there's no real right answer to this it really depends on the subject uh of of your study essentially Yeah. This also goes to another question is how do you manage audience participation in a big questionnaire survey? Lengths 20 plus minutes. Uh so I think the very first thing if you're doing more than 20 minutes survey and you know obviously if you're doing more than 20 minutes in audience it's typically going to be some level of research. 
Uh, so the very first thing you really need to do is kind of incentivize them much more than you would ideally, right? Uh, if you're paying, let's say, a dollar, a dollar and a half for a 15 minutes survey, you probably want to pay three, three and a half for, you know, although it's just five minutes more than that, but, you know, the fatigue substantially increases. Uh, the second also is to kind of make the survey itself as interactive as possible. Uh, a good example of this is like you know there, there are two three ways to ask the same question like if you're doing a rating or a likert scale you could use the basic matrix which is like the industry standard uh, but this obviously has higher fatigue because if you have let's say five rows and five columns you essentially have 25 data points so it could just it just creates the subconscious uh, you could say fatigue uh, but a very simpler way or a more i would say interactive way of asking the exact same question is a text slider so it's the exact same data, uh, but it's much easier to answer. It's much more, uh, much easier on the eye. It has mm -hmm. some graphics to it, right? Okay. Another example is like you want someone to rate you from satisfied to unsatisfied. You could potentially just use a single select, uh, but you could also use maybe a smiley rating and change some graphics, right? So things like so that. So kind of make the make questions the faster. Bit more. Uh, it's not about faster. I mean, they're going to be equally fast in terms of yeah. faster, obviously. It, I'm assuming you already use the best practices like auto advance and auto submit, which makes the survey as fast as possible. You know, but in spite of that, if you're still going to a 2021 question survey, uh, then <laughs> making the survey itself as interactive as possible uh, is, I think, something that you should certainly do. And I think another thing that's also very important is somewhere at the 50% mark, just have a trick question. Like a trick question can be as simple as select no to proceed, right? You're, you're generally, if you're not actually reading the questions, you generally tend to just say yes, right? But you generally oh. say that to proceed, select no, right? So this just, you, you ensure that uh, they're actually attentive. Uh, so you get better quality uh, in your analysis. I gotcha. Okay. I mean, I don't know if I'd ever last through a 20 minute survey to be funny. even, <laughs> on, even on products that I love, even on like when target sends me a survey, I, get nope, I, I love like, surveys. Anytime I stay at any hotel or something, I, I am sure to answer the survey as long as it is. I, I really love to uh, give my feedback. Uh, if I kind of feel that maybe my feedback is making a difference. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's like, oh, you know, I do, I do feel like my feedback makes a difference. I actually got a refund even from one place last month when I submitted my survey, but it still took a while. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, what else do we got going on in here? Okay. Here we go. Daryl asked, what types of data analysis are available with our platform? And then he gave some examples like, MANOVA, I don't know if this is a word or an acronym, A-N-A-O-V-A -A -A and T-TEST. Uh, so we uh, we only offer T-TEST from these three, but we do a lot of advanced uh, stuff. Like obviously T-TEST is something standard. We do Spearman's correlation. Uh, you do a standard kind of cross tabulations. You can do a turf okay. analysis, uh, gap analysis. Uh, so a lot of stuff that you can do on the system itself. And then obviously we integrate with like SPSS or R or something like that, uh, where you could even run some of these uh, even more complex uh, studies essentially. But a lot of the stuff that I guess nine out of 10 researchers or probably 99 out of 100 researchers need, uh, you will find it on the system. I gotcha. That's great. Daryl, I hope that I answered your question. Um, I think... Uh, we've had a couple people who answered their questions and then they left. That's all they needed. <laughs> <laughs> so stick around, Daryl. Maybe you'll learn something. <laughs> um, what else do we got going on? Um, okay, Emily, she wants to learn more about exporting to Excel. And so does, you just answered, oh, so does to Tawanda. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, how... Um, you know, we have a lot of Excel questions on this one. So good reporting since we're already there. Let's talk about that. Uh, so what's the question now? Um, the specific question was, when I export some question types, the answers to the same question show up in different columns. Is there it, a way okay. to show all of the answers mm -hmm. to the same question in one column? Uh, so it really depends on the type of question you're using, right? So if I were to give you an example, right, uh, something like, uh, let's say, if I use a single select or if I use a drop down or a star rating, 
uh, smiley face, uh, any of these are really going to have all the data in, in one column. Uh, but if I use something like a select many, right, where, you know, there are six options and I could select, you know, potentially all six. So in that case, each option becomes one column of data, right? Uh, if I use, okay. let's say, a matrix, right? So each row choice that you see here, so for example, how satisfied were you with the following? So website becomes one column of data, service becomes one column of data, and overall becomes one column of data, right? Uh, the only way to potentially merge this would be really comma separated, which would still not work in a VLOOKUP. You know, so you'll, you'll still face that issue. You'll anyway need to split it before you can really uh, use it. Uh, but it really completely depends on the type of question you're using. Uh, and that's pretty standard, right? I mean, uh, the, uh, unless you can come up with a specific question, which, you know, potentially could very easily be shown in one column. Uh, but otherwise, as much as possible, we try to have it in one column. But if there are like this, like a second or third vector of data, then it goes into the second, third column, respectively. Okay, I gotcha. Um, what? Uh, and then Tawanda said there are some instances where the sequence number of responses do not merge in the Excel when the complete responses are exported out. Can you uh, yeah, uh, this is actually a glitch in our system more than anything. There's, there's no, oh, no. <laughs> uh, so it's really a glitch. Uh, and I'm hoping this has happened to you at least three weeks back because from what my product team has told me, we fixed this uh, on the 28th of Feb sometime or 28th, 27th of Feb. So any survey oh, yeah. created or data I've collected after that should ideally not have this issue. Uh, if you okay. still face the issue, just send an email to help at uh, questionpro.com and we'll be sure to take a look if there's something else that's causing it. But there's certainly a glitch, uh, which we believe we have fixed. Okay, that's awesome. Well, so it shouldn't have been happening is the, <laughs> is, <laughs> yeah. the is the quick answer. Um, and so here we go. Where, who else is online? Who wants that? Question answered. Um, Scrolling down. Okay, here we go. Um, here's one question. What is the best way to handle multiple date selection in surveys? Uh, so I think multiple dates, you really like uh, what I would do is let's say you need them to select the dates for three events, right? So the, the easiest way to really do this is just split it up, right? So for example, you go ahead and add the date question let's just say like uh, select date one or date for event one for instance and that's about it and then you can go into settings and obviously select the format of the date the you know the range of the date and all of that so all the settings are going to find right here if you want to default it to today's date uh, display the time so those are some basic settings you're going to find here and then if you have like the second event, all you do really is you see the separator here, you just remove the separator. So what this will do is when you add the next question, which again, we are going to add the date question. So it almost looks like the same question. So if I now just quickly preview this, it's going to look like, well, let me just turn off auto advance. So now if I just quickly preview that, it's just gonna look like one question. So we can essentially have three, four, five date collections uh, or date selections, uh, one below the other. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So like if it was like, what's your date of birth? Or, you know, let's say you're going back to the office, like what, you know, pick your three options that you'd be comfortable going back to the office on. Yep, you could, something like would... that. And there are many use cases, right? You could say, you know, how many people live in your household, right? And uh, right. if I say three, uh, then obviously I want to be asked, okay, can you put in the age for the first person, second person, and third person, right? Uh, so right. the logic to do that, obviously, we, uh, is super easy. And then, I mean, this is the way you would do it, like based on what they select, you're going to show them that many date selections, essentially. Okay, awesome. Um, let's go back. It looks like we're getting caught up on our Q&A. I also see that you are like typing like a madman behind the scenes, <laughs> feeding me the questions. Kartik is the ultimate multicast, uh, multitasker here, guys. Um, so if you literally have any question, it could be as simple as like, how do I change the color of a button? You let us know because Kartik <laughs> is here to answer them. Um, and I'm going to start running through some of the 
questions of people who aren't here. So Emily, Tawanda, Daryl, Todd, I hope we were able to, uh, you know, get your questions answered and let us know if you have some more or we need to expand, especially on that Excel stuff, let me know. Um, but, ooh, Reginald, that's a fun name. Reginald asks, how can you use logic to format answer outputs in near report finish? That's not a full sentence. Um, near the end of the report? You see this one down here? Uh, can you tell me the question number? Let me just quickly- 11. Take a look, 11, 11, 11. Da, da, da. Okay, got it. Uh, so how do you use logic to format answer outputs in near report finish? So I'm assuming like uh, you want, like for example, if you have five options, you really want to relabel them to whatever you need, right? I'm, I'm not pretty sure what the question is, but I'm, I'm assuming yeah. that's, that's it. Uh, so we have something called report labels. So for any question, if you just go into settings, uh, if you just scroll down a little bit, uh, you'll see the option here called, uh, da, 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 where's the report labels gone? Yeah, here you'll see report label. So you can just open this up. And here you can just put pretty much type in the values that you need uh, corresponding to the original, right? Uh, so okay. for example, for event one, I want yeah. E1. For event two, it should be E2. If I don't understand, maybe it should be minus 99. So you can basically put in the values that you need uh, for your reporting. Mm. So then when you export it and then like import, if you exported it or did an integration over to your own platform, it would automate, the labels would automatically match. Correct. Absolutely. Oh, look at that. That's exciting. That's what I have to do with HubSpot a lot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So let's keep going. We did, we went through all the best practices. Now we're going to get into some more, you know, kind of like technical questions. How do you create custom variables? I have a question in my survey for manager name X. How do I make it so the notification to the respondent is CC'd to the manager? Uh, so what you're going to need to do is firstly, like, whenever they put in the manager's name. So for example, uh, let's add a question here, which is your email address question. And let's call this a enter So let's say enter your manager's email address. Mm -hmm. And whatever the enter, we want to firstly update it uh, as a custom variable. What we'll simply do is your basic branching to the next question and assign, okay. let's say, custom two. So now whatever is the manager's email address firstly gets assigned as a variable, right? And then what we're going to do is just go into uh, settings. Okay. And under settings, you're going to find an option called notifications. So let's give it a second to load up. There we go. Okay, so right here you see <laughs> notifications. And what we're going to do here is firstly uh, send a thank you email, right? And you can go into settings uh, just uh, for a subject and what should be the body and all of that stuff. So this goes yeah. to respondent, but along with that, you also want a confirmation email sent to their manager, right? So what you'll simply do right. is enable this option, which is confirmation email. And go into settings. Uh, sorry, you, we need to do action alert. Sorry about that. So we just go into action alert, enable Great. this, and just put in new action alert. And what we'll do is now email a distribution list, essentially. Okay. And now from email, you can put whatever you need, from name, uh, whatever you need. And in the distribution, all you'll type is dollar custom two. Right. So now for this respondent, whatever is his manager's email address would come up here. So the system will kind of send and obviously include the survey response. So the system will send that particular person's uh, response to this manager automatically through email. Okay. 
Um, now, do you need to upload the email distribution list or? No, you don't, right? It's it's taking it from the response itself, right? So if, if, oh, okay. I, if I'm answering, let's say my manager, aditya.bhartetquestionpro.com. So I right. type that in and then that's assigned as custom to. So I just put in dollar custom to here. Uh, so dollar and in curly brackets custom to. So what I have entered, um, so the kind of the notification would be sent to that email address. I gotcha. I gotcha. Okay, I was like, I wasn't wasn't following there for a second. <laughs> um, that's great. Um, okay, here we go. What are some other ones that we want to go through? Um, we do have a question about matrix questions. So could you just kind of give us the 101 on how to do a matrix question and then how that passes to maybe your report? Sure. So I think matrix is probably one of the most widely used question, you know, on surveys, probably okay. just, just losing to maybe a single select like a radio button. I think matrix is probably the second most common question used. Uh, and it's fairly simple, really the fundamental uh, to really understand here is like, let's quickly add a matrix. Um, ta -ta -ta. So let's add question matrix. And let's say, uh, please wait. The following. How did you like this webinar? A plus. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see how we rate the webinar. <laughs> Do you think Crystal's hair would look better if it was purple? <laughs> and let's say the options here are, you know, speakers, content, overall, as an example. And maybe the column choices are. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Not helpful to helpful, helpful or maybe like to dislike. To we could Crystal use that. and Karthik were not helpful. <laughs> let's see. Fair. Okay, so let's say it's you know worst to best, <laughs> I guess. Uh, right. So now essentially what we do is each of these so. Each of this row is think of it as a single select question. So speaker essentially uh, is one question, content right. is one question, and overall is essentially one question, right? Right. Uh, so the treated as three individual questions, and it's in a matrix because they share the options, right? The options that you could potentially answer to these three are the okay. same, right? That's how it becomes a matrix, and it obviously saves you time, energy, and makes the survey look smaller. But fundamentally, mm -hmm. these are three separate questions. And in the analysis, obviously, you're going to get one column of data for, okay, how would you rate the webinar on speakers? And then what each of them answered, this is one column of data. And uh, then how would you rate the webinar on the content? This is one column of data. And how would you rate the webinar for overall? This is one column of data, right? So fundamentally, it's three okay. different questions. Uh, but and it's the a reporting. given they say, share the uh, columns. Yeah, and the reporting in the back end recognizes that there are three individual questions. Correct. Great. Correct. So cool. that's in the raw data, right? Uh, but obviously, yeah. if you look at the dashboard, uh, you're going to get a spider, right? You get kind of a spider graph with the mean of each of these. So let's say like uh, each of these fundamentally, like uh, this is a zero through, let's say this is five or this is one through this is five. So you get a okay. mean for each of these. So you'll get a spider graph on the mean as well. Uh, but all this is just in the dashboard. But once you export it, these are totally three different questions uh, fundamentally. Okay, and I have a, I think Dan and I talked about this on live with Dan, but which way should the matrix go? Like, does it matter? Are you influencing their decision depending on which Absolutely. way the matrix goes? Firstly, any way the matrix goes is wrong, if that's the answer, I would say. <laughs> At least in research terms, you know, whether you do it positive to negative or negative to positive, it's still wrong. Uh, because you're creating a bias one way or the other, right? Uh, if all your matrices are positive to negative, there's still a bias. If all are negative to positive, whatever order you choose, there's always a bias, right? So, <laughs> so, <laughs> that's so, like my, so depressing. Least, <laughs> uh, so at least my answer, whenever anyone asks me the best practice is this option here, which is the column display order and always use alternate flip. So what this will do is for half the people is going to show it negative to positive and for half the people it's going to show positive to negative right so this is going to reduce your selection bias 
or as much as possible there's still going to be bias but your the the real goal is to reduce it as much as possible and right. i'll always recommend the alternate flip option that's so fun that's like a fun survey fact they learned today alternate flip <laughs> um and what kind of it's super funny like this has been asked a lot to me even like when i'm doing client calls they're like you know what is what is the best practice you know positive to negative or negative to positive and they really both are both are wrong you always should use alternate flip till there's a better way to ask it yeah that's crazy um but you know good to know because then at least you're getting 50 50 uh bias (laughs) um (laughs) and what license type do you need to have for the matrix questions uh, it starts right with a free license, really. Oh, even yep. better. <laughs> um, I was like, I know we have so many on our, especially on our essentials license, we have so many question types that are free that I'm always like, um, I, if I get in, if I say they're all free, then I'm going to get in trouble at some point. Um, okay, here we go. New question coming in from Antoinette. Is it possible to choose a different chart option for matrix question instead of a spider graph? That's a that's a very good question, really. Especially you know when it's not a scale and it's really more categorical, right? Uh, okay. Then the spider doesn't make any sense. Like um, you know, if the matrix is like uh, the the rows are let's say the days of the week and you know the columns are which vehicle do you drive, right? Yeah. On the <laughs> day, right. So then then the mean doesn't make any sense because they're all categories. Uh, and we've got this feedback a little bit and we are looking to, you know, uh, if you see here, if you go to kind of any question, essentially you'll see like you can choose what kind of data it is. So for example, if I come here, I can go into settings and I right here so I can change this as nominal or categorical or whatever it is. Uh, so similarly, we're going to be kind of adding the scale type so you can select the scale type and based on that, you know, uh, you get the right graph. Uh, but at least as of now, you know, it, it's it's always a spider, but I think in the next probably four to six weeks, based on the type of data I select here, uh, the right graph would be shown on the dashboard. In the next, oh, so it's like in our next like release. Yep, this is a common complaint and we, we, we're looking <laughs> to fix this, but we just need the best kind of representation based on every scale type, right? And we also want to yeah. increase a few scale types here. Uh, so yeah, just a little bit of QA and we should be able to pull that out. I love that, Antoinette. It's on the roadmap. Good question. We, uh, you have to join next month to keep us accountable for it too. Yeah. Um, uh, and if you guys ever um, are wondering what's on the Question Pro roadmap, you can go to questionpro.com forward slash updates. Um, Perfect. Thanks, Radhika, for popping that in there. Um, this will keep you up to date on all of the things that are not only in beta, but also have just been released. And there you can, we have one sheeters for every feature. And if you need a demo of it, there's a button on there that says contact us for a demo and Kartik will, or your account rep will give you a demo. <laughs> um, <laughs> Kartik's the default. <laughs> um, if you Also, if you guys ever need a demo of a new feature release or have questions about our upcoming feature releases, reach out to your account rep because they have that information and are so willing to help you. And if they're not, then come talk to me and I'll make them. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, or Kartik. We're here to help. And so we really want to make sure that you guys understand all the features and use them all because we know sometimes this can be a bit overwhelming, which is why we started office hours in the first place. Um, okay, Kartik, do you have, you know, Kartik, I have one thing I do want us to share before that we haven't got a question on, um, but I want to save it till the end. So let's do a question about, here we go. Oh, here we go. How do you integrate a certificate of attendance or completion into a survey? Uh, So I think there are a couple of ways to do this, right? One is you really want maybe a dynamic a dynamic certificate. So something like your first name, last name, contact number, all those details need to pipe into the certificate. Uh, mm-hmm. So in that case, you really need to kind of contact your account manager. Uh, we have a small script for that. Uh, essentially, what that would do is it would create on the thank you page. It adds, uh, firstly, it would have some variables. So let's say, hello, Karthik, thank you for doing the event XYZ. 
uh, yeah. and you just click this button to download the certificate and obviously you get the certificate uh, so that's something you need to contact us for and we can get it done within the day's time and uh, the second is just a static certificate so that's irrespective of whatever the answer it's just a certification for completion it doesn't need to change at all by respondent so mm. that's super easy to do uh, all you can do is just go into finish options and just go to you a second to load up no worries i realize that i'm looking at my second monitor where i'm have your demo running and it just looks like i'm just like staring into the distance of my home for this whole <laughs> webinar <laughs> i promise i'm listening um okay settings okay my internet seems to be a oh, little bit no. slow Okay, but you can do it in settings is what you're saying. Yeah, so you're basically just going to finish options and they're going to find the option called uh, thank you page with the link, right? So okay. you may pretty much just say thank you and just click this button to download a certificate. And the action yeah. to the click would be obviously the path to download, right? So that's right. Like the just going to HTML and you can just put that in within, within a couple of minutes. I really think that the thank you page is something that people do not utilize enough. If I was going to like... Yep critique our customers, which I would never do. They're always right. Um, <laughs> but the thank you page is something that people do not um, just like utilize enough. I think um, this is a, you know, it's gives that like brand, you could definitely do some like good branding and like leave a, like a great, you know, brand impression on people when they're finishing up their survey. And this is the easiest place to do that. Yep, so just put in the URL here. Uh, for the download path and that's about it as that's simple great. as that and then they'd be able to because if it doesn't need to change then it's just a static Correct. state so i'll just put in the file name here whatever it is yes and that's it so whenever they click on it they'll go to the path and you can just download i love that Okay, well, now that we're at the end, of, so now that we we got about 15 minutes left, Kartik, I would love for you to take us through custom dashboards. Um, awesome, this that's, that's <laughs> one of, I think, the most exciting things, at least that I, I'm super excited about. Uh, and I know. I that's, <laughs> yep, that's, I think this is just the first step. I think it's going to just get better over time, you know, in the next mm -hmm. uh, couple of quarters. I think we're going to work a lot on it, but I think it's pretty good even where we stand today. Yeah. Uh, so if you go into analytics, you know, whoever has been using question pro for a while is used to just having one kind of dashboard and, you know, obviously any setting you do like color, logo, the questions you want to see, uh, your mean calculations, anything that you do uh, really is, you know, changes on everything. So we did have like, you could add filters and you had this concept called permalink earlier, uh, where essentially you could take that link which was a filtered version of that dashboard but any of your overall settings right like your mean or the questions you want to show or the colors or stuff like that would really be just be one global setting so now what we've essentially done is every dashboard is unique so i could essentially go create a new dashboard let's say which is the manager's dashboard so i can just say okay uh manager dashboard and obviously for this i do firstly want to just add some more text i don't want to show all the questions he really cares about let's say just two or three of the main questions uh so i can quickly do that so i can go ahead uh, and just add a logo of my choice uh once that's done i can put in my description uh then i oh I can... so each hold on each mm -hmm. report can have a different logo if you were distributing let's Correct. say you're yep. like a a firm and you have like multiple customers you could distribute it to the same survey to them just using a different logo correct or like uh, i think the simplest use case of this is like uh you're running the survey uh, you you really got your framework survey right and you run the same survey for different clients so obviously the on the survey their logos would change uh and obviously yeah. in the data you want to give them access only to their slice of the data right so you really right. just create another dashboard uh, apply that filter to it. You know, you can apply the filter here for that particular client. Uh, put in his logo summary for him. Uh, in display, there could be some client specific questions. So you can add or remove those. Uh, in settings, you choose like, okay, what, what is the order of your questions? Uh, do you want the options to be shown in ascending or descending order? Uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you do need the summary card. Do you need the map? Do you want to hide uh, kind of empty options? Do you want to own? 
uh, statistical calculation? Do you need to weight or balance your data? So all that stuff you can do for the client. And then in design, you obviously want it to uh, maybe represent some, most of the time you want it to represent your brand, but maybe in this case, you want it to represent your client's brand. So then you can go in and also change the color scheme for this particular dashboard, right? Uh, so this really is really helpful. Uh, typically, if you're sharing you know, data or a piece of the data to the same survey, uh, to different sets of people that could either be internal like uh, if i'm doing like a, a employee satisfaction survey i want to right. kind of create dashboards by teams you know that's one use case or if i'm running the same survey for four or five clients i want to create different dashboards by client so either way i could i could use this new uh, kind of custom dashboard function Ooh, tawanda has a great follow-up uh can the custom dashboard also be used to create custom report for an excel so many people absolutely 100 percent. so once you've got a custom dashboard you just go into your download options and here you will see if you download it into excel or csv it's going to give you the raw data just for this custom dashboard if you choose any of the graphical representative like your word or powerpoint or pdf again it's going to just export data for this dashboard and the same with spss as well so absolutely once you've done with your dashboard once you've added a filters and after that if you export it it would export for the data that's showing on the dashboard. Awesome. That's cool. <laughs> so then you don't have to create like, you don't have to clean up the Excel spread, like the Excel spreadsheet separately. It doesn't, it Correct. comes from the Correct. dashboard so, you're picking from. Right. So right now, like what a lot of people do is if they're running the same survey for multiple teams, uh, what we'll typically do is like have one master Excel offline and then really just run some graph on that Excel and then manually share it. Uh, you know, I think that's what a lot of people do. So this really just negates that where, you know, obviously dashboards, uh, you have more control. Uh, it looks much better. It's a link. So you could just send a link on Slack or just email it. Anyone could click on it and see it versus like if you actually send Excel or PPT, it becomes tricky to see on the mobile. Uh, so the many advantages of actually just sharing a live dashboard and the most important part is like they just click on this these are all live dashboard right it's not a static dashboard right so yeah that's what i was gonna today. ask you yeah and if someone you know clicks on it three days later they'll see you know data updated even for data collected in those three days essentially that's awesome so the live link takes you to your specific dashboard Correct. and then and that's always updated so you could see surveys coming out in real time but then right. the uh, manager or the survey distributor person programmer could just <laughs> like could download sorry i was trying to I, you know uh could uh download that dashboard and that just gives you the certain point in time though so there's really more right. benefit sending out the live link because you're able to um keep the manager or I don't know, Walter um, updated <laughs> in real time instead of like a snapshot in time. Correct. Yep. And I think awesome. in today's world, like everyone wants real time data. No one really yeah. wants static data. I think we are moving away from the days of static data. Uh, so yeah, I think dashboards are really at some point, all data is really going to be shown on your dashboards. Right. And then dashboards start at team edition that's correct yes okay i was like oh <laughs> you, do, you do get one you, you do get one fundamental dashboard uh even with you know essential or advanced so you right. could like create one view uh but as in how you want to start adding multiple views uh, you do need kind of a uh, team edition or research license where is the live link for the custom dashboard so right here you see the share button so if you just click on that uh, you get the link uh, to the dashboard. And then if you want to make it secure, you can also add a password. Uh, and once that's done, you can simply share it. There you go. Get those live dashboards rolling out, man. So handy. Absolutely. Um, that's awesome. And the environment that they they don't need a question pro account or anything to see. Nope, nope, nope. It's, it's a public right? link. Uh, if you've added a password, then obviously they need to know the password. And that's about yeah, it. It's no, all, all the reports are mobile optimized and if they're mobile, desktop, tablet, it's, it's just going to look and work fine. That's awesome. I love that. Well, you know, oh, <laughs> uh, 
the link is updated. The link stays the same no matter how many times the Correct. reports update. Yep, you right? know, once you send the link, that's it. So even if you change the logo after that, you add or remove some questions, you change the mean calculation, you change the graph type, you change the color, anything that you do will automatically reflect the next time they go to the dashboard, to the original link we are sent. You don't need to resend the link every time you make any change. That's awesome, man. That's I think you're going to you're going to change some lives here. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I mean, that's definitely something that I think that it's, if you're working for a market research firm specifically would be a great use case or just if you have multiple stakeholders. Absolutely. And I think I personally even use it because uh, like when I'm doing some of my surveys, right, whether it's research or whether even some of my internal like feedback surveys. I just need different dashboards to even analyze the data myself, right? Uh, so I think you <laughs> like if, I just I need them separated. Be, <laughs> yeah, so like if you're if you're doing a research on let's say consumer products, you know, it's, I'm doing for maybe Coke, uh, and in that you know there are four or five products that I'm essentially researching. So I could essentially create a dashboard for each product because I'm going to analyze them very much separately. Uh, so I mean I think there's also a use case to just analyze it separately by yourself as well you know uh, instead that's, of you know just add, updating the filter every time yeah i mean that's what i do on you know my like hubspot that's where i it's like i have one for sales one for marketing one for meetings yeah, one i think for still the one thing that you would potentially use is ab test your favorite tool so if you're doing <laughs> ab test you have let's say four potential paths so you could create a dashboard for every path right so it's not Ooh. one big as report but like a custom dashboard for every path that they could potentially have taken so I think that's, that's a great use case as well when you're doing A-B testing. I do love A-B testing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do love it. Um, man, yes. Uh, yeah, so uh, Radhika actually shared the link to our custom dashboards blog that we just wrote. There's also obviously on the updates page, there's um, a help, there's help files, yes. And um, of course you can always get in touch with us. Well, you know, guys, I'm so glad that you came to join us. Kartik, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge. We got through, I think we got through over 20 questions. We had 17 that came in before and then everybody, we had 10 questions asked in live time. And so we are so thankful that you guys were able to join us. And thank you to Kartik for taking time to walk us through all these fun Absolutely my pleasure. And I think yes. I think one one thing that I do want to call out is you know, this has been probably I, I've done a lot of a lot of these webinars essentially, but I've certainly got some of the trickiest questions today. So I absolutely love that and love the we fact almost, that you know we almost uh, stopped people, you. Absolutely, people. I think I'm I'm just probably one 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 step away from being totally stumped. Uh, but the questions are getting trickier session by session for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love that. Well, don't worry. Next month you get a break because I'm gonna bring Adrian in. Um, but you guys, make sure you're you tell your team that we do this every fourth Monday or last every last Monday of the month. Um, is we'll be hosting office hours just like this where you can send us your most tricky question. We also will be sending out a follow up email with the uh, questions and answers afterwards, and you can find the other office hours on our YouTube channel. So thank you so much for joining us and thank you guys for uh, spending time with us. Appreciate you guys. Bye. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. -bye.